day six of the Atacama Extreme. And right now I am making my way through an active salt lake, which is pretty crazy. It looks like popcorn. It's really crazy. And you can hear it cracking and I'm bubbling all around you. It's pretty wild. When originally I was uh, following a, a railway, old abandoned railway bed, but the salt had, maybe that's why they abandoned it, bubbled up through and and it, it was, yeah, just crazy. I don't know, because uh, it's an active lake, why you'd uh, have a railroad through there, but maybe you can, I, I don't know. But then I looked down to my right and I saw an access trail for the railroad, which actually seemed to be in better shape than the railroad. So that's what I'm running on right now, because I could walk through the other stuff very slowly and precariously. It's amazing how, um, you know, uh, it's, it's very, I don't know how to describe it, very unstable terrain. So you break through or you can roll an ankle and some of the, you know, the broken part turn into these holes and it's quite deep, you know. Reminds me of the Sasrugi on Antarctica. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so that's where I'm at uh, right now. I'm at kilometer maybe 20-ish today so far. Okay. But I took a certificate of the notation of my gente, it would be my name. Okay, so we stopped in this, uh, basically it looks like a truck stop. And as we were filling up with gas, uh, the police pulled in. And they were talking to uh, Javier, uh, asking him all sorts of questions, and I asked what was going on. And I guess uh, a car similar to his was involved in a robbery, and so they're checking it out. But interesting stuff all the way around. Out in the middle of this salt lake are these abandoned houses that I guess were you know, uh, active or people were living in. Maybe it was a restaurant, I'm not sure, when the railroad used to be here and now it's gone. Because it shows you when the infrastructure leaves. Williams, uh, I know we're on a mine um, and we're en route to find Ray for the next water drop, but what seems to be the problem right now? Why, why can't we get through? Well, uh, in this moment, the road is a little bit changed because uh, the mine is working here. And then he he needed a, a, some special permit, mm -hmm. uh, and at the moment waiting for a special person, he want to go, give you some special permit for going inside to the mine and then across the mine, and then can do our work. Okay. All right. Thank you. So it's a bit of a stressful time. Um, we are in this mining area. We have to cross through this mining area. Um, but in order to cross through, we need security, a uh, security escort. And Ray just called in a little bit ago, and he has reached the water drop point, which on one hand is good. That means he's moving really quickly. He's there about an hour ahead of schedule. Um, but on the other hand, that probably means he's out of water, and it's cooking out here in the sun. So uh, hopefully we can get there as soon as possible. So it's over an hour since uh, I first spoke with Ray, and he's out still in the mine area, um, and we're still waiting for security here at the gate. Uh, he's definitely out of fluids, um, and he's going to stop moving. He was just trying to make progress, and we would meet up with him, but now uh, we figured it's best to conserve his energies. Um, he has shelter, so uh, he'll get out of the sun and into some shade. Well, we're just hoping that security gets here um, in the next couple minutes. They said 10 minutes um, about 40 minutes ago. So in our last update was two minutes. Um, and I see another vehicle coming this way, which hopefully it's them. Okay, as you can see, uh, we're moving. And we've got our security guy up ahead. And we are going to raise position. Another awesome day, uh, just totally pumped up and stoked. Bob and I had an awesome video conference with schools, and that always gets me fired up. There's thunderstorms in the distance, and the train is really good. 
I've been trying to give her uh, since the break. We had about a two hour break. I was stuck while Bob and Javier were trying to get access to this mining territory to do a water drop. I'm glad they showed up before I evaporated. <laughs> Catch you later. Um, each day when I'm finished running, the, the, originally when Kevin and I were running together, the idea was to retrieve a drop or potentially uh, meet up with the team um, and camp with them and retrieve a drop. But what we decided to do, because I'm running alone, is in order for safety, uh, instead of just retrieving the drop, it's guaranteed that I'll be camping with my team every night. So this is part of what expeditions are about. It's really cool. I mean, I, I unpack my backpack when I get here, hang out, we make food, uh, and tonight uh, one of our team members, Williams, made a campfire out of just some, you know, pieces of random wood he found laying around out in the middle of the desert that he collected, um, you know, over the course of the day. And, you know, so here, here we are having a campfire. It's just totally awesome.